and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147. Today's section is section 26. So we do actually finish on the right, even though we seem to do the left for most of it. And we do technically finish off the actual ribbon today. Splatters will be for the leftovers of tomorrow. Um, I was just actually second guessing uh, my choice then. I thought I'd got modelled up with which order they were being done. That would have certainly thrown a spanner in the works, but luckily I've not. Um, but it's been, it's been known. It wouldn't surprise me if it did happen at some point, but we do have quite a bit of white. I can't believe it is like the eve of the end of the waffle. I'm not quite sure if I'm actually ready for the end of the waffle this time. Um, it's it's definitely been, I don't know, it just, it just seems each year it gets more and more fun. Definitely makes me very excited, ready for December's as well, that's for sure. But I'm gonna get my straight little line, my last line across the bottom done. Um, so, comments, etc. on previous ones. I'm currently on comments from the 23rd of June. Um, so I am still a little bit behind, but I'm gonna see how much once I have, of course, finished the waffle, I'm going to see how long a waffle I can fit in over the next few weeks on Sundays until we sort of get caught up a little bit on comments. I might try and have a couple of monster waffles. We'll see if the weather holds out as cooler. It will definitely be easier to do. Uh, Liz says her body must have known. She said that today's topic was bed at 2am. She said she went to bed at the normal time last night, uh, but sleep eluded her. So she got up and sat in her craft room and diamond painted until about 1.30. Made herself a cup of tea as her husband had woken up and couldn't get back to sleep either. She then went to back to bed with her cuppa and eventually got to sleep at about 2 a.m. only to be woken up by the alarm at six. Ooh. Um, that was so that she could get up and go to work. She said at least because she was working at home, that meant no travel. Woohoo for working from home. Um, she said, needless to say, she is, she is shattered. So she has planted a new clematis in her garden and sat down this afternoon to diamond paint. I don't blame you. You need something a lot more relaxing to take your time during the rest of the day. That's for sure. There is nothing worse than not being able to get to sleep when you want to and when you know your body needs to go to sleep. It can be so frustrating when it just eludes you, even though you want it. Uh, Lady Dax, she said the team here is called ACES. Uh, they are pulmonary and cardiac units. She says she does know that other parts of the country have them. She said, so if you do think you could benefit, she says, ask your GP. Uh, she says she managed the entire session today without stopping to sit down until they were told to. She says she is truly amazed and proud of herself. That's amazing that it's working so so well for you there's just so many things out there that you just don't always know about until you get to experience them or chat to somebody who has experienced them that can make such a difference in your day-to-day -day life 
um, I'm so happy that you've that you found it and that it's working for you and that you love it even if it is hard work <laughs> um, Cheryl says hi Rebecca she says she's a first time commenter hello and welcome uh, she's from Louisiana USA she says she really enjoys listening to me, um, especially when you talk about your daily chores or the things that you have accomplished that day. Uh, she said somehow, she says that inspires me to pause your video and wash a load of clothes or load the dishwasher. She says, thank you for doing this event and offering such generous prizes. Well, I'm so glad that I could help you with your motivation. Um, I can't say I have done many household chores today. Uh, Catherine has been watching Luna, so I have been able to get some future filming done, ready for videos coming up in July, of which... I feel like my calendar keeps on growing. I think between my two channels, uh, there are a couple of times that I have a video on both channels because of the amount of videos that I feel like I want to fit in. Um, D kittens, kitten ups, all the rest of it. Uh, I think I currently have one day in July where there is not a video, but I am sure that, that will change. Um, I have fitted in the montage so I have decided when that will be. It's a couple of weeks after the waffle finishes just to give chance for all the images to get in and for me to do it, you know, do the editing a bit before the video goes live. So I want to make sure that everybody's got sort of like pretty much a week to be able to get their pictures up on Facebook but yeah I've managed to fit that in I've also fit in um, the de-kitting of this painting which will be a bit later on in June and that's actually caused me to sort of double up across the two channels on some videos so yeah it's quite a few days of six videos on this channel um, and some on my other channel as well so so far i have one day that will not have a video on either channel and that is near the end of july so i am sure that will change but yeah that has been my productivity for today having said that catherine has been productive today i started unloading the dishwasher I like to unload it and refill it while the milk is warming for my coffee and I sort of just do it in stages throughout the day when there's only me in. Um, sometimes I do just decide, oh, I'm going to do it all and I finish it up. A lot depends on whether I need to use the kitchen for something that day. So if I want to use the kitchen sides, I'll do it a bit quicker. But if I don't, I will do it in bits when I make a brew or when I go and make some lunch if I remember to make lunch I will um, unload and load up the dishwasher and then wipe down all the sides as and when I do that but yeah I sort of started it this morning Catherine finished it all um, cleaned up wiped down everywhere gave everywhere a good straighten up and sorted out the last of her uni bits so she officially has handed over the keys, the last of her bits out of the kitchen and the last of her bedding came home with her. So she's got all that sorted out today, which is great. That's sort of found a home in different nooks and crannies until September. But yeah, that's been the extent of my productivity today is getting a, a few videos done ready for July which is still good but I feel as though the day has disappeared it really has disappeared uh, I don't know where this week is going <laughs> it's going away to the fairies again um but yeah it's good to get it's good to get them done 
I need to get quite a few de-kiddings done. That's what I'm itching to do next because that will tidy up some bits. But I also want to get my log book ready uh, to get that all tidied up so I can make sure I get all the paintings in there and get my decision wheels up to date because I'm sure I've missed a couple. So I'm really looking forward to doing my logbook update on Saturday. Of course, I do need a picture of this finished. So it, it will be a video that I will be filming on Saturday. Um, but yeah, hopefully then I'll feel a lot more organised and straightened out and everything in the right place at the right, right times. <laughs> Um, Laurie says she's going to add her two cents about the heat topic. <laughs> she said the heat in England and most of the central and eastern US, she says, is moist. She said the good thing about it, she said her hair curls and her skin loves it. No wrinkles. She said bad things about it. She says while her skin is soft. Her sweat glands are overworked and she is soaking from head to toe. Uh, she says one time she had to go on a business trip to Jackson, Mississippi in the summer. Uh, she, had, she said they had to deplane using the outside steps. And by the time she said she got to the ground, her makeup had melted and she had a river of sweat running down her back, but her hair was curling all over the place. <laughs> she said the heat in southwestern US and Australia is dry. She said one sweat evaporates before it even makes it to the surface. She says so that's good. But moisturiser is mandatory to keep wrinkly skin at bay. Um, she says also there are many creepy crawlies that love the heat. And let's just say she says she's a not a big fan of them. Uh, she says and if you want to go to the water, there are big teeth, sharks and crocs, poisonous rings with the octopus and those horrid jellies to contend with, she says, which means no sticking my feet in the water to cool off. She says, personally, she will take the wetter heat, good air conditioning, curly hair and fewer wrinkles. She says when her mum moved from Indiana, moist, to southern Utah, dry, 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 uh, she said her skin looked like a prune after a year. She says a cute prune, but still a prune. Uh, she says hope mum gets a heavenly giggle from that statement and doesn't come back to haunt her. She says keep cool. Well, they are definitely benefits for the UK type of heat, that is for sure. Um, I still will take my 20 degree days at the moment though. Uh, they are an absolute blessing, that is for sure. Uh, Irene, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says, you got white. She said hers is black with colours too every day. She says uh, that's her 50 minutes a day. So she's got black with colour and I've got white with colour. I don't so much mind some paintings that are a lot of black, but I must say I do prefer it when that black comes in sort of outline form. Uh, I find that a much more enjoyable bulk amount of black to do than solid blocks like this. Um, for that, I much prefer the lighter or the white colors to the black. Um, but black outlines, oh, they're so striking. I like black outlines because I can then colour things in. I can do colouring in with diamonds. That's why I like them. Uh, Donna Carotti 
says Rebecca said they have been trying to figure out how to change diamond paintings from Hunan or is that Huican uh, or any AliExpress to a cross stitch pattern app. Uh, she says she's not sure how. She says is that possible? Um, I don't think I don't think you could just change a painting. Um, and it automatically sort of show you the diamond, you know, a cross stitch pattern diamond painting type thing equivalent. You can get cross stitch patterns that you can in effect turn a picture, but it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be exactly the same as a diamond painting because it would depend on what software that company uses to turn a diamond painting in sorry a picture into a diamond painting um, but you can definitely turn images into die into diamond paintings and into cross stitch using some cross stitch software um, it just wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same as one you would go to buy if that makes sense uh, Shirley Ann she says hi Rebecca she says talking about animal patrons to do with illnesses she says do you know that Bagpuss is the is a patron of asthma no I did not uh, she said there are some people with asthma who don't know that either well I've had asthma since I was about three and I did not know that um, I like Bagpuss though. So that is that is a good one. We have Bagpuss. Uh, she also says what type of breed is Luna? Uh, Luna is a cockapoo. Uh, so it is that is a cross between a cocker spaniel and a poodle. Uh, Luna is actually classed as a type B cockapoo. Um, that is because her mum is a cockapoo and her dad is actually a miniature poodle. Not that she's miniature at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's a cross between a cockapoo and a poodle. Uh, though she does have a lot of spaniel in her, especially in her ears and her snout. You can definitely see the spaniel. She's also never quite got the full curly poodle type hair. Her hair is more spaniel like. Um, we keep expecting it to turn a bit more poodle as she gets older but so far it's definitely keeping the more spaniel look. So maybe she's got a few more of her mum's genes running through her than her dad's. Uh, Janita says she calls them snake eyes. Oh, I wonder what symbol that one is. What symbol you call snake eyes. Uh, Mysterious Days, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says, good evening. Uh, she ended up finishing both her section of the day and finishing a budget Yoda and Gremlin diamond painting productivity she said she is beginning the kitting down process she said she worked today which means she is absolutely exhausted <laughs> but she can't wait to get busy this weekend she says um oh she has her brother who is actually 20 years older than her um she says moving in next week so it is going to be chaos for a bit she says but she is hopeful she says let's see how it goes she says anyways she has got some more purple hair dye in which means she is dyeing the bottom half layer of her hair again love it go for it one of my daughters likes to dye the bottom part of her hair not so much the underneath part, just more of a dipped. It's currently red. But the colours do change. Um, Ray V Heights says, speaking of middle names with meanings, they have two brothers and they both have their mum's maiden name as their middle name. 
she says uh, she doesn't have a middle name uh, and it's been a bit of a sore point um, once she discovered the fact as a child. She says her name has no special meaning in the family, uh, which is quite funny, really, she says, as she's the family historian. Oh, it's weird that your brother's got a middle name, but you didn't. It's normally, you know, you either, none of your family has a middle name or all of them do. And they don't necessarily have middle names with special meanings like that's just what we've chosen to do. But a lot of people just pick names that go nice together or something like that. But all of us, me, my brother and my sister all have middle names, um, but they don't have a meaning. So there's not a reason behind our middle names. Um, they're just our middle names which doesn't come up, it doesn't seem to come up as often as it used to. Uh, quite, a lot of quite a lot of places are happy with you just your first name and your surname and don't necessarily need your middle name, um, though some places do still like to have both. Of course, your passport and things like that are often things that want both. Uh, Diamond Tood uh, says, hi, Rebecca says she's new to diamond painting she started in april 2023 that is new hello and welcome to the craft uh, she says she's a long time crafter uh, she says are you a process diamond painter or a product diamond painter uh, she said she is a process diamond painter um, for her, it is about the process rather than about the product. Uh, of course, she loves the products at the end, but she paints for the process. She says just something that she ponders, and that's from Amelia. Um, I can be a bit of both. So the process is definitely a very huge part for me. I absolutely love the process. Um, but in turn, I enjoy the endings of the paintings, the beginnings of the paintings, you know, the kitting up, the kitting down, all the excitement I get from that. Um, there are some paintings in my stash that I would say it's more the product um, and the outcome that I will have from that picture that I enjoy maybe a bit more than the process. I absolutely adore painting, um, diamond painting pictures with lots of colour, with lots of bright colour. I found that out doing one that, you know, wasn't one that I would ever think of necessarily hanging on my wall. It was actually Diamond Art Club's Mother Earth, but oh, the colours in it and how they popped, it had those black outlines absolutely adored it and I have found that since then I am drawn a bit more to bright coloured paintings um, but they are very much so for the process whereas there are quite a few paintings that I also get and have and like because of the final image more than this is going to be fun because I'm going to be diamond painting loads of different colours it's more I love the image at the end of it and therefore while I will enjoy the process it's actually the product at the end that I'm going to be more excited about. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah I'm, defi I'm definitely a bit of both. I do have quite a few paintings that are hung up in my home, some that have been hung up and then have since come down because decor's changed and maybe something else will go up instead. Um, but yeah, it, I, it, it really depends on the picture and the image. So at the moment of the three large paintings that I have kitted up, I have a Diamond Art Club mystery painting kitted up. That is a process. That is the process. The fact that it's a mystery gives the process an extra little twist. It's abstract, it has nice bright colours in it. 
love the process of that. My Dreamer Designs painting is more the product. I do still enjoy doing it, but it's actually the finished image that draws me to it hugely. It's not all dull colours, um, but they're definitely more muted than some others. Uh, and then the carrot art one that I'm working on, again, is more process. The colours are bright, funky. Um, I really, I'm actually really enjoying multi-placing the big sections of colour blocking and then filling in all the little gaps with, um, with the single placer afterwards where they're, where they're all more spread out. So yeah, it really depends on the painting. I like it for a bit of both. Uh, Kaz, she says she made a comment about uh, when she was at work where it was particularly busy to the point when she wanted to pull her brains out through her nose or words to that effect. <laughs> I do. Uh, OK, so that must have been in reference to something I've said where I've read out a comment and got a bit confused. But no, I do remember you saying that you'd had such a bad day at work. Um, I'm sure we all have days like that. Maybe some a bit more extreme than others, that's for sure. Uh, Mummy Escape, she says she has two whips on the go now. Uh, both are a mix of confetti and colour blocking. She says, but the colour blocking is 310 on both of them and both were budget buys she says why is 310 so trashy i think some of it is to do with the process uh, it's very hard for any imperfect 310s to be seen at a glance it can be very, very hard until you're inspecting close up. So I can look at this tray now and go, OK, that one has a little bit of something on it. I can pull out any that have air bubbles quite easily across the whole tray. Whereas with black, you have to study it a lot more. And I think that can be re a reason that 310 can be so bad. Um, whether some of it is affected by whatever dye they use to make it black, I'm not sure because they are particularly bad compared to some others. But I think a lot of it is you just can't inspect them the same way. They just can't be looked at and see the bad ones seen very clearly at all. Uh, Debbie says, hi, Rebecca. She says, we had a really large Woolworth in Croydon High Street when she was little. She said, and talking of buttons, her dad used to work in a button factory in Loughborough. And she sometimes used to go to work with him and help him sort and pack them. Oh, that would have been amazing. I would have loved to. In fact, I'd probably love to do that now. Never mind. Never mind when I was a child. That is amazing. I've always been interested in how things are made and the workings in the background for things to be made and stuff like that. It always fascinates me, that's for sure. But yeah, that sounds like a childhood dream. Trying to get these last few diamonds to get themselves the right way up. That one is not going to because that one is actually concaved. So let's pull that one out while I'm here. And the air bubble one I missed. Um, Cat Lady said she did a Jack Daniels painting. Uh, it was to be a gift for her son, uh, but it went in the bin, she said, as it was nowhere near clear enough. That is the thing when you've got something with words on it, especially if it's the likes of the Jack Daniels bottle that you actually want to be able to see the words on it. Um, it does often quite need to be need to be quite a bit bigger than you especially might want it to be. 
for the words to be visible enough and for you to be able to see them. Uh, Athenix Rose says, Hi Rebecca, uh, catching up on all my videos. Uh, they've also been watching old unboxings as well. Um, they said my videos are as addictive as the craft itself. Well, thank you. Um, they love my channel so much uh, and they hope the family are all well, which they are. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for everything and keep it up. That is definitely the plan. Uh, to keep it up, keep things going. I keep trying to think. I've got quite a few ideas for things I want to bring in to maybe do a little bit different or try and mix stuff up as well. But so far at the moment, I am trying to keep up with just de kittings and getting ups and unboxings and all the rest of it. But I know a lot of you like those videos as well, so I'm sure you won't be disappointed with those. And when the madness has calmed down, I might be able to do some of my other ideas too. Uh, Carrie says, yesterday uh, they officially finished their second painting for June. Another productive one. Um, the first had been a whip for months. Um, and they started a third today, which is a 20 by 20, which will bring them to the end of June. Uh, because they've split it into smaller sections to give their back and head a break. Uh, they've also loved the June waffle. They say thank you again for doing this event and for the encouragement to take time to do our hobby. Um, despite these daily migraines, they've been able to push through while watching and listening to me talking. Um, they did get their first infusion of new medication to hopefully get their migraines under control. Uh, fingers crossed it helps and said happy painting to all. I really do hope the medication helps you because it must be so frustrating to have, you know, pain that you're trying to combat through. Um, hopefully time and painting through it has been able to be a bit of a distraction as well as anything else because it can be so hard um, if not hopefully at least it's allevi alleviated some frustration uh, in the fact that you've you know powered through and done something um, and something that you want to do despite it a bit of a go away to the migraine or headache that you've been experiencing depending because I think a headache turns into a migraine does it or does it just come straight on as a migraine um, I think it can do both um, but yeah you have achieved something even though you've had a migraine which is a good on you um, Melissa says oh, what a lovely video um, thank you so much for this. Uh, oh, this is actually, I've missed this one. This is actually on an older video dealing with a big canvas. I normally um, react to any comments on other videos and I've missed it. Um, but they are getting ready for their first big painting. And I do have a video on dealing with a big canvas. Um, and how you can deal with a big canvas even in a small space um, because I do work in more of a confined space when I'm diamond painting in the conservatory. Uh, definitely more confined than my filming space uh, which is actually bigger uh, but I do stand up to film and I don't want to just shut myself away in here to diamond paint of an evening. I much prefer sitting on the couch. Um, so yeah, hopefully they have fun with their big uh, painting. Uh, Nova Scotian Hiker uh, says they currently have three whips, uh, a 30 by 40 round 
Highland Cow for the June Waffle. A 60 by 45 of Snowy Owls on a Moonlit Night, which is in square. Uh, and Paint Gem Mystery Mini 2.0. I can't wait for my decision wheel to pick the mysteries. The Paint Gem Mysteries. I've not done them yet. I kind of wish it would hurry up and pick them. But we shall see what happens. I will be updating my decision wheel with the three that have just arrived with me. Or very recently arrived with me. I did throw up an unboxing the day that they arrived. Because I'm so happy to include those in my decision wheel as well. But yeah, I am hoping to get some of those kitted up soon. And keep doing my sort of one a day-ish. Um, and get through some of my paint gem mini kits and then whenever I get new ones I can be on them a bit quicker. Um, they said the owl is behaving itself nicely. Uh, the owls have popping, sorry the cows behaving itself nicely. The owls have popping drills but the picture is turning out better than they imagined. Uh, so pretty. They said it's the first diamond painting they've done with double-sided tape um, and they definitely prefer poured glue. Poured glue is loads nicer. Uh, it said you've inspired me to try the Paint Gem Minis uh, and they love them. So thank you for everything that you and your family do. Yeah, Paint Gem Minis are just different. Um, the other evening I did spin my decision wheel to diamond paint. I think I started diamond painting a bit later than I normally do. I think it may have been about eight o'clock. Um, and the decision wheel chose my diamond art club mystery. Well, as I'm doing my diamond art club mystery, I'm thinking I am getting tired. I was like, I really don't want to you know diamond paint up till like half nine like I might normally do um I was like I'm just too tired to spin the decision wheel again but I did still want to do something so I pulled out a paint gem mini and did one of them it's sort of like a 45 minutes ish 40 45 minutes depending on the set to finish one of them. I can imagine the Mystery 2 would take a bit longer because they are bigger um, than the others. But yeah, it's just, it's they're just different and it's like just a sense of achievement when you've got one done and they're just so portable. They're great to take with you if you go in somewhere where you can potentially get a bit of diamond painting in. Um, I love them for that. And now I've got my little um, clipboard, my little A5 clipboard, even more so when we took them to Centre Parks, it was great, I just had had my clipboard as a table ready to go, didn't need to take over the dining table in the apartment, I could sit on the comfy couch and still do it all without having to cart my table along with me or anything else which I have done in the past. I have carted my little folding table to Centre Parks in the past, but I tried to pack a lot lighter this time, um, just to save trekking back and to from the car for things that just weren't used or needed. So the Paint Gem mini sets were absolutely perfect. I just took one of them with me. Uh, Teresa says, your picture shows me with dark brown hair uh, and the video shows you with light coloured hair. She said it threw me off. Yeah, so I was blonde as a child. Uh, it then started going to more of the mousy blonde. Uh, I did get it highlighted for a little bit when I was sort of teenager, early 20s. But then that just became a bit too much work by the time I had four kids. So I decided to dye it dark brown because I could do that at home from a box. Um, 
and it would give me you know a uniform color hair rather than not quite knowing if it was blonde or brown and then a few maybe a year or two ago uh, it became to the point that the, the beloved grey started showing through in my roots a lot more so therefore dyeing it brown would either need to take place a lot more um, or would become you know yeah it just it just was too noticeable so I decided that now the children are of course a lot older older and a lot more able to take care of themselves to treat myself a little bit more so I now take my hair to a hair to a salon to the lady and yeah it's now dyed with my original colour um, a lighter blonde and a mid blonde so I now get my hair highlighted so that's why the picture is different the picture on my YouTube is from a few years ago I probably could do with updating that um, I just don't take I just don't take pictures of myself very often or allow people to take pictures of myself very often so maybe I should get that updated because I know my hair does appear in videos um, quite often hopefully not too much on a day when it could do with a wash uh, Gretchna says thanks to the excitement of finished sections uh, so there's been several days uh, where she has done more than one section as a result uh, she's actually going to finish her big brown painting within June uh, two years since starting it she started it in the summer of 2021 um, the half that she started in June was about 56 by 50 centimetres. Awesome. Does it feel good to get that one finished? That's the main thing. Does it feel like a nice big achievement to get that one finished? Or are you disappointed that it's finished? That is the question. Hopefully it's excitement. <laughs> Um, of getting something finished and checked off. Uh, Lady Dax says she has two whips at the minute and two paint gem sets. She says hopefully both whips will be finished by the end of the month as she has a very special one to do. Uh, and she says she'll say no more about it until Monday as she'll be kitting it up as soon as it arrives. I think I know what that one is um, as of course we have passed Monday as I'm reading it out but I'm sure future comments will confirm. Uh, Tamara says they're currently working on Diamond Art Club's Butterfly Sins uh, and not only does it have ABs, but it also has crystal drills in squares. Yes, they've been doing that a lot more in their recent paintings. Cosmic Trip has rhinestones, crystal. Crystal ones, the clear or the silver, depending on which way you look at it. Those diamonds in it, and it really, really works in that painting. It definitely looks so good with just that touch of the crystals. Um, Jerry says, hi Rebecca, says they are a day late watching today. Uh, they said that I read a comment from a subscriber and continued the chat and about how um, your children are named. She said her oldest daughter's first name was picked by her husband when she was pregnant. Um, the name happens to be the female version of his dad's name. So when it came to choosing her middle name, they chose his mum's name. I was told by Will's mum to never ever name my children her name. 
<laughs> she didn't like her first name. Um, so yeah, uh, as much as she was loved, she is not included in the children's name at her request. Um, she said, in my husband's family, it's tradition to name the first son after the grandfather. Uh, said my husband wanted her name because he loved the name. Uh, so as you know, I have twin sisters. Uh, however, they did have an older sister who passed when she was five months old. Um, so she wanted her youngest to be named after her oldest sister. Uh, she said she did spell her name differently to her sister's name so that her daughter still has her own name. Um, in fact, um, she says she, in fact, is named after her great aunt. Uh, and as much as she wanted to name, to change her name as she was growing up, um, she would never change it because it is her aunt's name. Uh, she said the oldest twin sister is also named after the aunt that passed away and the youngest twin was named after her grandfather. Um, she says our oldest sisters that passed and herself have the same father uh, and he passed when I was very young. She said if we would have had a son uh, she would have named him after the father and grandfather uh, as a husband didn't want to follow the tradition of naming his son after his dad. Um, her husband is named after his grandfather, as is three of his cousins. She said this can be confusing when his side of the family is all together. Said one of his cousins live here in the US, the others live in Canada and Greece. Wow, that is... That is, if there's the same name within the family quite a few times, it can get tricky. Um, my husband is actually um, named after his father. Um, not necessarily a tradition that was carried on, uh, but one of his uncles also had the same name. Um, though there are different variations. So his dad was always called Bill. Um, and then he was little will or young will and then his uncle was the uncle will <laughs> just so just so that you knew who you were referencing um because it can get a little bit confusing at times that's for sure um alaya says do you still have the on um, cooling blanket that you unboxed ages ago. She said, use that to sleep. Yes, I do still have it. Uh, it doesn't always help me to be able to get to sleep, but it definitely helps more than not having it. I'm sure there are some nights my body just goes, you're not sleeping tonight. No matter if, yeah, I'm sure my body just has conversations with itself uh, that wants to go against anything I want. <laughs> but yes, I do still have the cooling blankets that I unboxed a few years ago and still use both of them. Uh, Tamara says, uh, what about lids for your trays that would keep your drills in place? Um, said, if God forbid there was an accident. Yeah, that is something that we might look into. Um, it's, it's whether we can get a design of a lid that would work without changing the design of the trays. It is sort of on the potential list. It's just when we might be able to get to look into that. Um, I don't want to make any promises on how long that could possibly take. Right, I have got all my white done on that section so let's start down here this actually gets quite a few of the little sort of wispy bits done these little dots that are on their own stop me missing them hopefully 
Uh, Brianne says, hi Rebecca. Uh, she said she's adding to the whinging about the weather. You join in. It's been a topic um, caused by me hugely, this whole waffle. Um, she said it is 92 degrees Fahrenheit here or 33 degrees Celsius. She said, sadly, July and August tend to get even hotter, which they do here too. So I'm kind of hoping that it doesn't get that hot. But yes, ours tends to get hotter in July and August as well. So goodness knows what that will bring. But while there are Sunday waffles, there's not waffles all the way through the week. So maybe your ears will be saved from me moaning about the heat for just a little bit longer. Um, she says she is blessed to be in the US where air conditioning is common in almost every building. She said, but it is still not fun when there are things that need to be done outside. She says she doesn't want to think about getting through the summer without AC in the house. She said, do you at least have ceiling fans to help move the air about? Uh, no, <laughs> they're not common here either. Uh, some places do have ceiling fans. It is something that I've looked at as maybe getting, especially for night time. Uh, we think it might be better. We do have portable fans. So we do have three portable fans most of them I think were bought last summer maybe the year before and um, so they are often on in the evening when we don't quite need an air conditioner in the bedroom but we don't have ceiling fans um, it's a very it's, I even started looking at them the, the other week because I was thinking ceiling fans would probably be a good idea because you can use them to help warm up the room as well. You can get ones that turn one way and cool it, turn the other way and heat it. So I thought that might be interesting to have a look at, you know, just when we need to take that chill out the air when it's winter as much as cooling it down in the summer. Um, but yeah, it's trying to get my head round it all because it's just all so confusing on what is the right one and what's a good branded one. And then, you know, comparing that to cost and potentially getting them put into each room in the house uh, or at least all the bedrooms. So, yeah, I've not quite gone there yet, but no, it's not standard here. <laughs> Which is why we moan. <laughs> it's another reason we moan. Uh, Denaya says uh, they have re reluctantly determined that they are unable to listen slash watch my whip and waffle while holding one or two sleeping kitties. Um, they've had to restart this waffle um due to a double dose of relaxation oh bless you <laughs> there's nothing like holding anything that's sleeping whether it be kittens or a baby or yeah anything that's sleeping to just make you drift off yourself um so yeah i completely understand why you may have drifted off during this video um, Grey Legrand says, Rebecca, she said, how did you decide what to offer up for giveaways? Uh, it almost seemed like a decision wheel opportunity. <laughs> well, it was hard, um, I will admit. A lot of it was, I decided that rather than... Um, Rather than, you know, doing something that could just be, right, I'm going to go through 
all of my stash and see what I'm happy to let go of and then just do all of that. Um, I decided that it would be more interesting if it was different manufacturers. So a lot of the time uh, when it came to a manufacturer, I would sort of choose the ones I definitely wanted to keep and the ones I wanted more so until it became, okay, well, that must be the one I want the least to then decide because I love them all. So it very much became a, what do I want to keep the most? And then picked one from pretty much each manufacturer, basically, as I went through. Um, and then, of course, decided to do two Add More Zest giveaways because I think that's only fair um and yeah try to sort of vary it up a little bit but I still feel like I have far too many in my stash and I've done a giveaway for many I don't know how many giveaways it's actually been um let's see if I can figure it out because I was away at the beginning so it did take me a little bit to be able to set up the giveaways um but i think i've got two four six eight nine ten eleven giveaways in the end and i do still feel like i have far too much in my stash um, and that's including the final giveaway that is not today so I am going to leave you on that note. Uh, please join me tomorrow while we finish up the whip and waffle uh, with what will be a final giveaway at some point throughout that. But yeah, thank you all so much for joining me. I have a beautiful ribbon and it will look absolutely amazing once I have my last bit of splatter. Um, I will speak to you all again tomorrow.